Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is the fifth in the set of series of using procedural texture to do saturation masking. And just as a very quick review of where we've come from, is we've been using procedural texture here. So the first time we just looked at the maximum minus the minimum. So let's just put this over here for a mo, so that when you turn it on, you can see that the brightest area here is where it is most saturated. And that's the basic formula for identifying where we have saturation, because it's the gap of if you've got three colors here, like up here, the saturation is the gap between the lowest and the highest. So if I move on to the next one, so after that, we multiplied by A and by B. The base there, we needed to make that one to go up to one. There we go. So we can see it. So that's where we started from before. So I can make this darker, but if I may add to the base each time, then I make it brighter. And this then gives me a control then to pull this down. In the one after this, we just change the names of this because what this was doing, so A and B is the same, but now this goes to minus and plus and in the formula up here, instead of multiplying by A and B, we added one to each one. And we also put a shift on because now we're actually playing with a histogram. So with this histogram here, if I turn up the stretch, it moves to the right, it literally stretches it. And if I pull it downwards, it shrinks it inwards. But so this in itself may be enough. But if you want to boost it a bit more, you can put some more boost on that there by increasing the number here. Shift then also, I bring this round here, just bring this back to, to the basic value there of, let's put that say down to zero. So shift helps me move this. So if I move this to the right, see I'm just moving the whole histogram there, which means effectively a lot more of the picture is selected. And if I move it to the left, then it darkens it off. So there's a lot less selection going on. So we can use this combination then to move around the histogram. So the next thing we did after this is we went to this one, which added an invert. That's all it does. So if I turn this zero here to one, it inverts it. So another effectively in terms of selection, that when it's zero, it's selecting for saturation. So the whitest parts are saturated. I can make them whiter by turning up the stretch and squeeze. And if I put this to a one, so turn that up to a one, it's the other way around. So the saturated part is not selected and the whitest parts are where the, which are selected, which are going to be for where there is more monochrome or no, non saturation or desaturated. And we can play around with these to get ourselves to a point where it works best for those white areas. So, for example, I can turn up the stretch boost a lot there so that only the, the more monochrome areas, which are white and black, are being selected. I can type in here and just put zero because, because I put B plus one up there. What I've done here is that formula I had before, I've duplicated it because I have one for, for the saturation and one for the desaturation, slightly different calculation. And I've used the D from here, which indicates the number here. And it's I do, doing effectively an inverse there by one minus. So one minus D does one and D multiplied gives the other. So we've got this quite long calculation here, but it's actually a lot of duplication. So right, let's now get this back to the basic basic form. And what we're going to do here is if I go and I got red, green and blue selected, this calculation is applied to the red, green and blue channels, which is why they're all the same. They're black and white. If I turn those three off and add the A on here, then this now is acting like a mask. The other ones are looking effectively like a preview. So this is actually doing the selecting through here. So I could use this as a mask on an adjustment like curves. And because this is more selected, then the curves will have greater effect in this selected area here. And so again, if I inverted that, then I could select it for the rest of the 
image, which is not selected in the first one. OK, so what we're going to need now is now an extra one here, which is going to be just a switch and it's going to be here. So I've just put an integer here and I'm going to make this not equals preview and one equals mask. So we can actually change the function of this from being showing it as in black and white and it turning into a mask. So that's kind of helpful because you can set up then in the in the preview and then flip to the mask and then use it to control an adjustment. And this is just going to be naught or one. So the question is how do I do this up here? So if I just take this here, I'm just going to put this back to RGB for now. And because this is showing here what I want for RGB, some of those I want to apply these, this formula to when I've got red, green and blue. And when I'm going to do a mask, I want to put it just on the A. So what I need to do now really is to take those off here. I'm just going to apply this to red. Right. So the question is, how do I do this? Well, what I need to do, first of all, because I'm going to use this formula multiple times, is put a bracket around the whole thing and then I'm going to use it individually. So when I've got a zero here, I want zero to mean this is when I apply this formula to the red here. So in other words, I'm going to multiply this times one minus E. So in other words, when E is zero, this is a preview. I want this to be a preview. So this just turns this on effectively. It multiplies it by one when I'm getting, got this just a preview. So I can have red, green and blue all using the exactly same formula. Then I'm going to go plus E. In other words, when E is one here, I want it to be a mask. So what do I want to show in red when it's a mask? Well, I just want to show the normal red channel. So I multiply it by R, then hit enter. So this is what I've got now for red. I just need to select that, control C to copy that, put another one in, which is automatically goes to green. So I just need to paste that in there and replace that red, the R with a capital G. So it applies it to the green channel and then do another one and then delete the R for red and put in a capital B for blue. And so now when I've got this as zero, then it's showing this as a preview. And when I'm going to put it to one, it's going to turn it into a mask. But I need to do the, uh, the A for this to show what happens with that. And so what I want to do is add another one here. So add equation here. And now this is going to go to A. So the question is, how do I do this? So if I paste this whole thing again, but I don't want to have the one minus E on the end here, I'm just going to do times E. So what does that do? This is going to apply all of this to the alpha, the transparency, when E is one. In other words, when it's one, it uses this. When it's zero, it's effectively turns it off because it multiplies it by zero. And then plus, what do I do with alpha? In other words, A, when I'm turning the red, green and blue on. So I'm going to have for that one minus E. So in other words, one minus when it's a zero here for preview, which then leaves it as one. Then multiply that by A, which is usually going to be one. An ordinary picture when everything is is fully visible, then it's one. But if you've got some bit we've actually punched all through it, then you keep the A in it as well. So now, so I've got zero here and it's a preview and I've got one, it's a mask. So I turn this to one and there you go. It is now acting as a mask. So I've now got my complete calculation here, my complete formula here and my saturation mask that I can control in various ways. I can invert it to select for the more monochrome and I select it for the or the satur desaturated. I select it then for the more saturated or colourful and I can switch it on and off between being a preview and a mask.
these other here, I'm just going to delete this for the moment to show how I might use this. So I bring this up here. I might say, well, let's invert it. So I'll turn that to a one. So I'm looking for all the blacks and whites here. I'm going to turn up the stretch boost so it selects less here. And turn this up here. But I'm showing this as a mask here. Let's turn it down to a preview because I can see the black and white of it. There we go. So the white is what's selected. So I can turn this up a bit here, maybe add another one on this. So I'm just selecting here for the monochromes. And then what I'm going to do, actually I'm going to invert it back again. So I want to do everything but the monochrome. So I'm just going to go back then to this. So yeah, that'll do. Now I'm going to turn it into a mask. There. So now everything here is selected except those more monochrome areas. So I'm going to put in the curves or any other control you like. Drag the procedural texture there up to the curves there. So it's a child here of this. And now when I adjust this here, the monochromes are going to stay the same. So now I got a nighttime type picture by turning down the more colourful areas, but keeping just the more monochrome areas to make that more realistic. So there we go. That's a way of doing this and I hope that was useful. And the formula will be in the area below so you can cut and paste it so you don't have to type it all in. And thank you very much for watching.